Keith, um, what was just curious your thoughts? What Paul is Malinaji? Do you expect him to beat Zab Judah that easily? I didn't watch it, and I expected him to give Zab a hard time. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't. I I had that uh, opinion based off of the first four rounds he gave Adrian. Okay. Yeah. He tended to fade out a little bit, and in my opinion, he threw too many body shots instead of head shots, yeah. and he was disappointed with the decision. I think if he would have gone to the head a little bit more and calculated more power shots to the head, maybe the judges would have gave him a draw, um, or maybe even the victory. Uh, it was a very close fight, him versus Adrian. Um, he's, now with, he's now with Al, the greatest manager in the game right now. Um, got him in the fight with Zab, and as you can see, you know, um, Paulie's not done. You know, Paulie Paul, still has some work he wants to put in. And, you know, congrats to him. You know, during your interviews, you have a real bold personality. You put it all out there. Where does that come from? Have you always been like that? It just comes from the passion of the sport, man, you know? Um, it comes from the history of the sport, you know? Um, you got you got some guys, I, I fight, I fight, you know? And that's all that they got to say about it, you know? I got more to say about it, you know? Um, I fight, but... I'm going to do this. I'm going to get him to the body. He can't take my power. They, you know, practically nobody can, man. A lot of times, um, a lot of times it's a matter of just placing the shot. That's why my nickname is one time. You know, everybody gets caught. But it's about getting caught with that critical hit. You know, I get hit, you know. The one thing that I'm, I'm looking for, though, when I'm in a fight is not get hit critically, you know. And the, one, the other thing, though, is to not get hit critically, but to hit my opponent with a, with a critical shot. Yeah. So, you know, I like to think of myself as a technician on top of being a power puncher. And, you know, I'm just really happy to be here, really happy to be where I am um, holding on to the WBA interim world title. This is my dream. This is what I've been working for ever since I was a kid, um, to be fighting on the networks, to create knockouts on the networks, you know, to be building the fan base that I'm getting. Like I said, man, it's a blessing, and I'm truly grateful. How did the Florida fight scene uh, mold you as a fighter? Take me back to those days coming up. You know, the Florida fight scene, it was interesting because I wasn't really that aware of it for many years until I got into Dan Birmingham's gym uh, with Winky Wright and Jeff Lacey. And then I was able to see some of the um, true talent that Florida held. Matter of fact, it was a long time before I even ever saw Roy Jones fight live, you know? Um, tremendous fighter, one of the greatest fighters of all times in his division. Um, Florida has great history for those for those who know their history in boxing. Yeah. Um, I believe other states, because I grew up in the amateur ranks, I believe other states have a far tremendous amateur program than the state of Florida does. But at the end of the day, the state of Florida creates world champions, and I'm looking forward to being one of the next great world champions. Now, you're, with Al, uh, you're with Al Heyman. Uh, tell me a little bit about what have you got to learn about the business side of boxing coming up, you know, like how it's more than just the fighting in the ring. It is a business. Tell me about that side of things. It is a business. You know, that's why, um, that's why I like to open up my mouth and talk a little bit because a closed mouth doesn't get fed, you know. I talk about the fights that I want to get, and he does his best to get them, you know. Um, I told him, I told him when Madonna fought um, Devin Alexander, man, I would love that fight. Yeah. What happened? The fight was being negotiated, and then Madonna pulled out. You know, um, I told, I told Allen, I told Golden Boy, I want Robert Guerrero. What happened? They pitched it to him, but he said no, thank you. You know, so, you know, the the business is is the business. You cannot make a fighter fight. You will never be able to make a fighter fight. But uh, uh, what, what have been your thoughts on Danny Garcia, his rise to stardom and his eventual move to 147? You know, uh, me and Danny go back in the amateurs. He was at the Olympic trials just like me. I remember watching him fight many times. And I'm truly happy for Danny and all that he's accomplished at 140. If he's going to be moving up to 147, you know, there's, there's plenty of action here. We got a lot of thumpers. And um, we'll see, you know. Um, <laughs> Do you know if that's official? Do you know if no, it's an official move? down the road. The eventual, about, that's you know, right, that's, that's right, you know. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens, but I'm, right now, I'm just proud of Danny for, for all of his accomplishments, and I'm looking forward to his next fight.